Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do thank God for his grace and his mercy, his love and his kindness, and we're certainly glad, glad, because this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. And as we're uh, looking toward our e-services and how we are uh, gathering together now so that we can come together and worship, uh, for right now, this is, represents the new normal. And um, we know that God is still in control, and we know that God is on our side. And as we want to look toward our services on today, I know I'm starting a little early, but I'm, I'm, I'm certainly anxious, and I'm excited, and I want to get started because I know that being with you all on today is certainly a blessed day. Uh, we want to go before the Lord in prayer. And we want to remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Uh, but before we go before the Lord in prayer, we certainly do want to acknowledge our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from whom all of our blessings flow. And we want to also acknowledge, uh, as we move forward, our leadership here at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, uh, we want to acknowledge uh, even our, our lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn. Uh, we thank God for her and her love and support. And we thank God for all the members of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church that help keep us going. Those that are even friends of uh, this particular assembly, we thank God for you all. And we thank God for your love, support, and your prayers. One thing I tell the congregation is that um, I need you and you need me and we need each other and certainly those uh, sentiments and those statements as we come together even now ring true even the more we need each other uh, and this song says in times like these we need a savior we need a deliverer so uh, let us pray uh, one for another let us pray for each other as, as God will continue to give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding on how to cope with situations and conditions, and especially in times like these. Also, let us pray for our leadership, uh, both spiritual and natural. Pray for our president, uh, that the Lord will give him and his associates wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And let us pray for uh, all those that are sick and afflicted, those that are going through. Pray for our doctors and our nurses and our medical assistants and staff that are on the front lines. Pray for the, even their families. I know that uh, this takes a toll on uh, not only the individuals who are doing it, but you know also takes a toll on the families of those uh, medical providers. And let us pray also, too, for our economy and, our, and those that um, have uh, businesses that are closing and our school children that are out of school. Let us pray that the Lord will keep them safe and, and that they'll still have uh, different means of learning and pray for wisdom as far as how they're going to catch up um, in their studies uh, during these times and, and things such as that. Also to pray, pray for uh, our elderly um, and those that are sick and shut in, those that are at the nursing home levels. Um, let us pray for them. And let us also pray for uh, people around the country, um, uh, different countries and cities. Uh, let us pray as well uh, for them that are being affected um, by this pandemic that is going on. So we want to go before the Lord in prayer. We want to uh, pray for also to uh, the churches that are online, that are um, going through um, this as well. We're not alone. And let us also pray uh, one for another for our, our service and our Bible study that we're going to get into in a few moments. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We just say thank you, and we praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We praise you, Lord, because thou art good and thou art merciful. 
Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together that we may pray and to seek your face, uh, that we may call on your holy and precious name. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul under the sound of my voice. We ask you to remember men and women and children everywhere. Lord, you save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to bless those that uh, can help themselves, bless those that have lost their way. Even in this hour, even in this time, Lord, you save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Your arm is not short, your hand is not short, and you're still on the throne. We ask you, Lord, that you're blessed, Lord, by your power, by your might, and through thy Holy Ghost anointing. Remember those, Lord, that are our, our, our hospital staff and those, Lord, that are on the front lines. We ask you, Lord, that you bless them and their families. Keep them safe from danger, seen and unseen. Bless our leadership, Lord. Grant them wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Let your most perfect will be done. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you bless our, our study on today, that you grant us wisdom and knowledge and insight. Lord, that you speak to our hearts, that we may speak to those that are hearing us on today, that you calm our fears, that you calm our hearts and our minds, that we'll look to you because we know that you bring us hope, that you bring us help, especially in times like these. And Lord, we know that this has not taken you by surprise, but you have equipped us and have prepared us for such a time as this. As we look to you, Lord, for leadership and guidance, Lord, send down your wisdom, send down your understanding, and have your way in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that you still undergird your churches, undergird, Lord, those uh, that that uh, those that you have called by your name. And Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all the praise. Comfort our minds and comfort our spirit. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, we certainly do thank God. We give him praises. We give him glory and honor. Thank you, Lord. And if I could sing, I'd sing you a song. Uh, Better days are coming by and by. And so we want to um, just bring forth a couple of announcements as we are looking toward um, bringing you e-services and e-church services uh, now until um, we are able to, uh, so to speak, reopen the doors and congregate together. And we thank God um, uh, for this opportunity. Thank God even for Facebook and YouTube and, and the internet uh, services uh, wherein we can uh, stream these services and have means to continue to communicate. But I want to announce that, you know, our platform here at Christian Ministries will still be um, uh, coming to you um, at 11 o'clock on Sundays uh, through Facebook and YouTube, and um, we want you to tune in. Um, and also, too, we'll be bringing you our e-Bible class services on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock. Wednesdays at 6 o'clock. Uh, yours truly would be your teacher, and that way we can still stay connected with the Word of God and through prayer. And those that um, have a desire, um, you can leave us messages, uh, especially on our Facebook page, um, any prayer requests, and even through our, our, our website at christiancmafc.org. You can still leave information there because I want to hear from you. I want to know what's going on, and I want to stay connected. And those that um, uh, are connected with Christian Ministries, we've sent out... Uh, text messages and if I haven't you're a member of Christian Ministries and you haven't received a text from me about the order of our services and special uh, directions uh, please uh, you know uh, find a way to connect with me <laughs> to, so I can add you to my phone list and to our text list so that we can be able to still get out vital information that is pertinent to our church members. And we certainly do thank God that another platform that we're introducing is the same as, as Givelify, but we're using Tithely, Tithely, um, as a form of e-giving. 
Um, it works the same as PayPal and works the same as Givelify. Um, you go on to your app store, download Tidely, and um, uh, find us uh, connected. Once you connect to Tidely, you'll find us there and then go through the process of, of putting together, uh, entering your financial information, uh, so forth, so that you can uh, give uh, in such a way. And in your giving, it goes directly to our bank and um, you'll receive a receipt um, so that you know the church won't be interrupted and then we'll still be able to uh, help those that are in need. We certainly do thank God uh, for your obedience and your dedication and your love and support, uh, not only to the kingdom of God, but also to Christian ministries, which is a part of that kingdom. Um, so we want to uh, move forward uh, at this time and looking at uh, the message, uh, the word uh, from the Lord. And I want you to uh, turn with me in the scriptures to Second Chronicles uh, chapter number six. Second Chronicles chapter number six. Um, that will be uh, our scripture uh, reading for today in uh, Second Chronicles chapter number six. And um, I want you to turn with me to verse 42. Second Chronicles chapter number six and verse 42. And, um, and in reading this particular scripture, um, it says, O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. Let me read that again in your hearing. Second Chronicles chapter number six and verse 42. It reads as thus, O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David thy servant. Remember the mercies of David thy servant. And um, I want to say before we actually delve into the scriptures, I believe that the scriptures are, are like good medicine as well, and God wants us to hear his word, and we should want to hear from God. And I know that uh, pastors and teachers and ministers and those that are uh, connected to people that bring the word of God to the flock of God are, are searching and calling on the Lord for a word from the Lord for the people. And I believe that God is, is really speaking to us uh, through this time, through this pandemic, um, to get our attention. God wants our attention. And only God can know how to shut down things to, to, to literally the world is being shut down. And uh, through this particular virus and through this particular means, I believe that God is, is, is trying to send us a message. God is bringing us uh, to greater understanding on his will and his way. And um, though the government has a response uh, to this pandemic by uh, trying to create uh, antiviral solutions and to uh, quarantine and to uh, uh, shut down various places and for people to uh, just shuttle in place, things such as that, uh, that's their particular response, the leadership of, of this world's response to this pandemic. I believe also God has a response uh, to this situation that uh, relates to his kingdom. We have a kingdom assignment response to what's going on, and, and we should give ear to what thus saith the Lord so that we'll know how to respond 
in these particular times, in these particular days, according to how God's word wants us to respond. Because like I said, I believe that God is sending us a message and we have to give ear. Let us hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. So as we look in our scriptures here today and we look for a response, I read in your hearing 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 42. And it says, once again, O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of thy servant David. And I want to come from a topic today, Lord, remember, Lord, remember, Lord, remember. Solomon, as we look at this particular text and try to get an understanding of what's going around in this text, Solomon had just dedicated, uh, is in the process of dedicating the temple of the Lord and as you know that David his father wanted him uh, to build God a temple after David was rejected from building the temple of the Lord and God allowed his father David to gather all the material that was necessary for building the king uh, the temple so so when that was done, David had passed and Solomon became king. So Solomon uh, really took the initiative to put that into place with what God had laid on his heart to build a temple for the Lord. And at this juncture in the scripture, the temple was put together. The temple was finished and complete. So Solomon uh, was moving toward the dedication of the temple or the house of the Lord. And Solomon then begins to pray. Solomon, being a wise man, realized uh, that the building of God really couldn't contain God because God is the God of, of, of the heavens of heavens. And uh, a building itself can't contain him. And that was an idea that was really uh, contrary to what was going on during those times with, with the superstitions of the other nations that were around them. They believed that, that, that their gods were confined to locations and confined to places, uh, their, their idol gods. But the true and living God is not confined to a location. He's not confined to a particular building or to a particular place. God says himself, the heavens is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So I thank God for the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon had some wisdom and he was a very wise man. And, and you see it incorporated in his prayer as he begins to cry out, to the Lord uh, for help. And I want to say this about prayer. Prayer is necessary. Uh, there, are, there are some prayers that have been prayed that are, are what I call perpetual, that they're still in effect. They're still in effect. Um, David, he prayed to God. And when we uh, read Psalms 50, 51, wherein David got into trouble and he asked God to have mercy upon him and to wash him and to cleanse him. Those prayers are still being prayed by us even unto today. And even uh, the prayers of Jesus Christ, uh, especially in St. John chapter 14, 15, 16, and 17. Y'all remember the prayer Jesus prayed in St. John chapter 14 where it said, we let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Then he prayed and said, I go the way to prepare a place for you, uh, that where I am, there you can be also. 
And then in, in St. John, Jesus prayed a prayer uh, concerning his disciples that, that, that we would believe on them, that we would trust in them, uh, even as uh, they trusted in the Lord. So prayer is essential. Prayers are perpetual. I remember even Daniel. Daniel, when the children of Israel were coming out of captivity, they prayed. They prayed. Daniel prayed a prayer that the Lord would, 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 would forgive those sins that the people had committed because Daniel recognized that God was in the process of reestablishing um, and, and, and the 70 years of captivity were over and Daniel prayed a prayer uh, so that uh, the people would be forgiven, that God would reestablish his kingdom and his authority upon the earth. So uh, Solomon, I said all that to say that Solomon in his process of praying realized that, that, that the people of God needed help. And he literally uh, begins to pray because the prayers that are needed for God's people and for God to intervene for his people would be continual. That no doubt people sin, people would, would uh, uh, do things that were contrary to the will of God, not only on an individual basis, but also from a national standpoint. So Solomon prayed a prayer that still resonates unto this day. As he begins to dedicate the temple of God, he asks God, God, if, if the people get into trouble, if they get into trouble, Lord, and they call on to you, uh, and they ask for forgiveness, Solomon said, Lord, forgive them and, and, and bless them. He went through a litany of, of scenarios. If the people got into war and then they um, prayed and called on your name, Lord, remember them and help them as, as they are your people. Then he prayed a prayer and asked during this particular time, Lord, if the people um, came across sickness and, and pestilence and diseases, and they repented of their sins and called on your name. Lord, remember them, remember them. And, we, and, and he went through uh, certain processes and, and certain scenarios that, that, that are very common even unto our lives. And that's where we get uh, in Second Chronicles chapter number seven, verse 14, uh, the Lord is responding to his prayer saying, if my people that were called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray, if they would seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins, and I'll heal their land. And this particular scripture in Second Chronicles chapter number 6 and verse 42, Solomon says, O Lord, turn not away the face of uh, the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of thy servant David. What Solomon was saying as he had ended his prayer was, Lord, um, remember, remember thine anointed. In other words, he was saying, Lord, let not my prayer fall on deaf ears. Lord, hear from heaven this prayer that I'm praying to you today from a heart of sincerity, from a heart of honesty, from a heart that needs some help. And that's the time that we're living in today. We need help from the Lord. And the Lord is calling us to come and pray to him from a heart of sincerity, a heart of honesty, a heart that, that is, is, is in need of him in times like these. What, 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 the scripture out of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 6, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call on him while he is near. And that's what's going on today, in today's world, and this is what God 
wants us to do concerning our response unto him. He wants us to seek him like never before and call upon him like never before out of an honest and a sincere heart. And he wants us to lay aside the things and stop the things that, that, that are evil in his sight, but really turn unto him with an honest and a sincere heart. The Bible says a broken spirit and a contrite heart, God will in no wise despise. And this is what Solomon is saying in this particular scripture, that Lord, uh, remember thine anointed, remember the mercies of King David. And as you know, that King David was a friend of God and, and the sure mercies of David. David was uh, a person who was quick to repent, quick to return uh, unto the Lord when he had, uh, had sinned against God. The scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we know that, 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 that even today that people have committed sins and people have done evil things in the sight of the Lord. But the Lord is telling us today to return unto him that he may uh, extend to us sure mercies, that he may help us. And beloved, we have to realize as we uh, move forward in this particular time and, and in this message that, that God is concerned about us, that, that God loves us, and that God has done certain things as of now to gain our attention. And we cannot uh, and we should not um, uh, look past these things and, and, and fear, look past these things and and, and, and just trust totally in our government. But we have to realize that, that God is still on the throne. And what is God's response? What does God want us to do in times like these? First of all, God wants us to turn our hearts to him. He wants us to repent. He wants us to repent for the things that we have done as individuals. And he wants us to repent for the things that we have done as a nation and, and, and turn to him for help, turn to him for forgiveness, turn to him for strength. And when we turn to God for strength, notice the scriptures. It says, if my people that were called by my name, those that have been called by the name of the Lord, those that trust in God, those that seek after God, if we turn our hearts to him, God will help us. God will deliver us. God will strengthen us. And, and the scripture says that if my people that were called by my name, if they would certainly humble themselves. And that's what we need today. We need to humble ourselves and seek after God and call on his name. If we seek after him and pray, pray. God wants us to pray. Pray like never before. God wants us to fast fast like never before. That's our response to this crisis that's going on now in this particular time. We have to come together as one and pray and seek God and ask God for forgiveness, ask God for strength, ask God to bless us with unity and power. And then we'll hear from heaven. The scripture says he'll heal our land, he'll forgive our sins. And we'll experience the power and the anointing of the Lord. The Bible says that uh, those that call on the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth in and they are safe. No disease, no situation can overcome us and overtake us if we call on the name of the Lord. If we plead the blood of Jesus and, and pray, and know that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. But God, God in his infinite wisdom and his knowledge and understanding, he's gained our attention. And our response to what's going on should be to seek the Lord like never before. Let me bring in one other scripture. The scripture that tells us uh, that, that seek ye the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. The Lord is near us. 
Hallelujah. The Lord is near us. He said in his word that he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. Thank you, Lord. And I thank God that we serve a God that is able to do exceedingly, that is able to do abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think if we put our confidence and our trust in him. So, so the scripture says, Lord, remember, Lord, remember us. Remember us in our time of need. Remember us uh, when we are going through what we're going through. Lord, help us. I believe that we serve a God that's a God of hope. Hallelujah. That's a God of strength. That's a God of power. And he's able to do what is necessary to bring us out safely on the other side. But we have to take heed. Take heed to what God is saying. Take heed to the message of the Lord and apply it to our daily lives. Don't isolate yourself from the Lord. Seek him, turn to him, and call on his holy name. And I believe that the Lord will be nigh thee, even in thy mouth. I believe that the Lord will strengthen. He'll give you what you need in these hours and these times of need. And if you pray diligently, he'll bless your family. He'll bless your children. He'll bless your resources. And he'll turn the hearts of the people back unto him so that they can become one in unity and in love. Uh, friends, if, friends, if we take heed to what God is saying on today, don't be in despair. Don't turn your heart away from God, but turn your heart to God. Uh, the scripture tells us that we must lay aside, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us so that we can call on the name of the Lord out of a pure and an honest heart. Jesus, hallelujah, he died on the cross. He died on the cross for all of our sins. He died that we might have a, a right to the tree of life, that we have, might have life and have it there abundantly. But friend, we have to turn our hearts to the Lord and seek him like never before. I believe that in these times that God is sending us a message. And that message is a message of hope. That message is a message of deliverance. And God is using this time that we're in to gain our attention. Hallelujah. Thank God that God does not want to destroy us. He wants to gain our attention. And he's got our attention. And what must we do? We must seek him like never before. We must call upon him like never before. In these times, what we should be preparing is our hearts to fast. We should be preparing our hearts to pray. We should be preparing our hearts to do what thus saith the word of God. And as we do these things, God will manifest his grace. God will manifest his power. God will manifest the sure mercies of David and turn away this disease that is trying to overtake us. He'll turn away that which the enemy is trying to use to destroy us. And as we continue to move forward, ask God to remember us. Remember us, O oh Lord. Remember us in our hour of need. Remember us. Remember the prayers that have gone forth even from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Remember the prayers that have gone forth even in your word, Lord, that, that when people come together and call upon your name, two or three are gathered together uh, and we call upon your name. Lord, you said you'd be in our midst. You said you'll help us in our hour of need. Lord, help us, hallelujah, so that we can overcome the enemy, so that we can overcome the attack that the enemy is trying to bring upon us. Help us. Lord, as we call on your name, that you might strengthen us and that you might give us what we need in the name of Jesus. And now, saints and friends, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, knowing that God is on our side, knowing that the Lord is our strength, knowing that the Lord is our refuge. And I thank God that you've tuned in for this particular uh, session in these Bible studies and these lessons and our e-services 
And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, let us remember to love one another, to be encouraged by one another, that God will be our helper, that God will be our strength, that God will continue to be our refuge. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord, for the examples that you have put forth in the word of God. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to encourage our hearts as we see the day approaching, that you lead us and guide us into all truth, that you bind every evil spirit, every demonic power that was trying to destroy us. And Lord, even in these times, let us remember you as you come to your name and we call on your name. Let us remember, Lord, your word that you're, that you're nigh us, even in our mouth, that you'd never leave us, that you'll never forsake us, that you'll be with us always, even until the end of the world. And we believe, Lord, and trust in your word that this too shall pass. Hallelujah. I'm encouraged today, saints, that this too shall pass, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. And every tongue that rises up against us, Lord, you've given us power to condemn it. Speak to your mountains, speak to your conditions, speak to your situations and encourage your brothers and your sisters, even as you see this day approaching in the name of Jesus. And my friends, we look forward to coming together one more time. Look, tune in on Wednesday, Wednesday at six o'clock. Hallelujah. 6 p.m. Hallelujah. We'll be here with you and we'll give you another encouraging word from the Lord. And we want to thank God for you tuning in. And may God bless you. May God keep you. May God watch over you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.